See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, for that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they'd heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he'd said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. So, shops are open and pubs and gyms and we can now do garden visiting. Yippee! Everybody get out there. Let's queue at Primark for hours because we've run out of pants, apparently. And get down the pub for a pint. Or get a new hairdo. Mine's on Wednesday. Can't wait. (laughs) If this is how we're supposed to be reacting, I'm actually not feeling it. And neither are many others. If anything, we have the opposite reaction. Stay in and hide. Preferably under a duvet. We have been living with fear and anxiety for such a long time now. We've become used to hiding away. Some have suffered serious trauma caused by the pandemic, bereavement, long-term illness, unemployment, social isolation, loss of motivation. We've all been affected in different ways. And when I think about this, about my own fears of emerging into life again, I am reminded of the disciples after the death of Jesus. They had been through serious trauma, seeing the one they had left everything to follow crucified, and they were hiding. John's Gospel says they had locked the doors because they were afraid of the Jews. They were licking their wounds and trying to come to terms with the idea of going back to their old lives as if nothing had happened. Their adventures with Jesus had come to an end. 
Now, in Luke's Gospel, this story comes right after the one about the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And after having encountered the risen Jesus, they turned round, went back to Jerusalem, and showed up on the doorstep where the eleven were hiding. We're not told how the conversation went, rather annoyingly, but I imagine they heard the story and just didn't know what to think. Mark's Gospel says they didn't believe it. There must have been some scepticism and definitely confusion. I mean, if it was true, what did that mean for them? I suspect the last thing they wanted was to put themselves and Jesus in danger again. But then Jesus appeared among them with a bit of a kind of, what's up guys, as though it was just a normal day. It was an ordinary greeting, commonplace, peace be with you. And they freaked out. They were already jumping at shadows, but now they had what they thought was a ghost to deal with. Their whole world was suddenly rocked again before they'd even had a chance to recover What interests me is how Jesus responds to this group of anxious and depressed young men who are just unable to move on with their lives. It's a really physical, grounded response. It's really me. Touch me. I'm real. Oh, and this being dead thing really gives you an appetite. What's for dinner? Broiled fish, whatever that is. There is a part of me that kind of wishes that Jesus had had a bit of fun with the ghost thing before he starts on the reassurance. You know, a bit of like, woo, I am the ghost of Easter present. (laughs) Fortunately, Jesus is a bit nicer than me. More importantly, though, he took their fears seriously and didn't dismiss them. There are lots of resurrection appearances that involve eating in some way, and I think that's significant. The divine was revealed in the ordinary, everyday act of eating. The smell of fish, the breaking of bread. And later on, the life of the newly formed group of believers was based around the sharing of food. Fear isn't good for us. Sustained fear and anxiety causes all sorts of problems. So some of us go mad with the freedom and the sense of going back to normal, and some of us just want to hide. We don't have the resurrected Jesus showing up for breakfast. So what do we need to be able to face life again? I'm going to offer you some ideas. It's not an exhaustive list but I am trying to dig deep into some of the reactions I've had to the pandemic. I'm not sorted yet. I find it difficult to be in church, and I still dread going shopping. But I'm facing that fear and doing it anyway. And we can help each other to face our fears. The disciples were very frightened of the future, but they were trying to face those fears together, not pretend they were okay. So I guess that's the first idea. Face the fear. Be honest about exactly what it is that frightens you. Share it with others. Get help if you need to. There's a phrase, feel the fear and do it anyway. Sometimes that's how it works, because if we don't, our lives gradually become more and more limited and we will be stuck hiding in the locked room with the disciples, wondering if real life will ever return. The second thing is we need to encounter Jesus. We need to recognise the divine in the ordinary stuff of life. It's important that we connect physically with the world especially when we're frightened. We need to notice it, breathe, touch, taste, hear, see. We need to know the ground is still beneath our feet 
and we're not in free fall. Mindfulness techniques can help being deliberately aware of your surroundings. And I know some people say they encounter God in silence and solitude. And if that works for you, go ahead. But personally, I find trying to do that stuff can increase my anxiety. It's not good for me to spend time inside my head. I'm not an expert on mental health by any means, so when I was thinking about this talk, I looked at the website of the Mental Health Foundation to see what they said about fear. That's a charity that promotes mental health. And I was really, really interested to see what it said about faith and spirituality. Here it is. If you are religious or spiritual, it said, this can give you a way of feeling connected to something bigger than yourself. Faith can provide a way of coping with everyday stress. And attending church and other faith groups can connect you with a valuable support network. Now, I was particularly struck by the phrase feeling connected. As humans, we need actual, real, physical connection. And that's why social distancing and staying home has been so hard. And I really believe that physically connecting with the world and people around us help us to connect with our beautiful God. The last thing I want to say is take your time. Don't expect it all to be sorted straight away. The last part of today's gospel talks about the job the disciples have ahead of them. But they didn't immediately go and get on with it. They took time to heal. They waited for the Holy Spirit. And God gives us that time. He's not in a rush for us to be sorted. So celebrate the baby steps. And as our first reading reminds us, we are children of God. Love is lavished upon us just the way we are right now. But we're being made new. And when we do see Jesus one day, we will be like him. Things are changing in us and in the wider world. And I pray that it will become a source of joy for us, not fear. We are a gift and a blessing to the world. So let's gently take some small steps to go out into it again. Amen.